there's nothing like somebody staring at you and the idea that my piece can stare back at somebody it makes them feel a little bit uncomfortable and makes them start questioning what's going on. A fascinating vehicle for me to, to, uh, to play with, uh, with layers and messages. How could I get people to become the story, the narrative, the hidden that's inside the eye? And I suppose that was the seed that led to uh, the start of the project. That adage, isn't it, that old twee saying that eyes are the windows into the soul. And I like that idea that eyes can stare and make someone feel uncomfortable and look right into, uh, into a viewer. So I'm painting the white of the eye and that's a separate element to the iris or to the tear duct or to the, um, to the actual eyelid itself. The reflection is the thing that I suppose is, uh, has been capturing my imagination most. It's, uh, it's the reflection in there, it's the opportunity to sort of tell stories in the eye. You know, if I visit a place like Blackpool, then the Blackpool Tower is going into the reflection. Or if I meet somebody as part of the painting, then it's quite nice to include those. I did that recently in a project in Philadelphia. What happens if you actually separate those different elements out? Could, I, could you play with those different elements, but actually, rather than create them on one flat plane, to start playing with a sort of almost an anamorphic nature, a sculptural piece that people could move around and, and interact with? Having spoken to the guys at Roy's People Art Fair who approached me and, and said, well, we've got this big entrance space, would you like to do uh, installation? I, I, I've done installations before, but they've tended to be flat against the wall. You know, when someone offers you a huge indoor space to build a sculpture in the centre of London in the Oxo Tower, well, you know, within an artist's career, how often does that happen? And I, I knew no matter how, sort of how challenging it might be as a, as a task, it was, it was something that I couldn't refuse to, to get involved with. I knew if I'm building something on scale like this that I needed uh, someone with some expertise. So um, I made a great connection in Nick, my builder, and um, was sending him little video clips of me with bits of cardboard, kind of waving them around and cutting them out, trying to understand the process. Actually turn bits of cardboard into calculations that would, uh, would work. And I realized that having to build each section, paint it, take it apart, build, build the next section, and then not know you know, have an idea that the calculations are going to work, but actually not know how it's going to completely work until the whole thing is loaded onto a lorry and driven up to London and installed in the space. Working with something which is kind of four or five metres wide and high, and that it involved more maths than I think I've ever done in the last 10 years. entrance hall space that we were working in was a thoroughfare, a journey for the visitor to come into um, the building and then make its way through up into see the artwork within the within the, the art fair. The install itself took a, took um, Nick and I sort of three days. Uh, we were very much up to the wire, having to sort of solve problems right up to the very end. But um, when the final lights went on inside the uh, reflection space and somebody actually walked through and we could see for the first time that it actually worked, uh, it was, yeah, it was an incredible feeling. It's, I think we visit galleries and exhibitions and told not to go near or touch the exhibition, but what I wanted to do was force people into the exhibition to actually become part of the sculpture and have no choice in that. So people were, were, were forced to look through um, that centre point, you know, the, the level that they could look through the anamorphic nature of the sculpture, but then be forced through to become that space inside the reflection. So I thought it was really um, interesting the way when you first walk in, you can't really see what it is, but once you walk around, um, you can see into it. Obviously it's three-dimensional, and like, the colours, and it's interactive, and it's just something really different to ordinary art. I love the fact that you included your viewers, and it was like a kind of like immersive experience. And I love the colours as well, like it's quite non-traditional, so if you see a normal piece of art, it's like, well, you look at it, but this time you're interactively involving everyone, so I thought it's really clever. I like it because I've been following his art for a while. I saw it on Instagram. It's like a big version of what he's done. Uh, he's always had the focus on the eyes. Brilliant. Nice to be a part of it. 
layers of uh, one of his typical kind of artworks and then to step into it and then have your photo taken and then you see it built up and now oh, it's there, it's just it's fantastic. <laughs> have seen it being built on Facebook over the week. Yeah, to actually see the fact that it's in 3D rather than a flat 2D has been really, really cool. The fact that you just get to walk in and have your photo taken. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And I'm really glad that we came up here. You know, to know that it, it completely did what I was, what I was hoping it was going to do was, was the biggest buzz. Um, and then to, to stand there and watch people's reaction, you know, there was, I don't know how many people came in through the fair, but there wasn't a single person that didn't want to stop and, and you know, in, interact with the space to, to take the photograph. They were able to see how we were playing with scale to create the piece that um, in a photograph just looked like a, one of the painting, you know, looked like the painting behind. It's quite healthy to put yourself in a position where you don't know if it's going to work. Now this was massive, I'm building a sculpture in the centre of London with materials that I haven't used before and a scale that I haven't worked before in an animal freak nature which has, involves loads of calculations and things and there are going to be thousands of people coming to have a look at it. There's nothing like that to get the adrenaline pumping and to, to get you really thinking about what you're doing. That's what drives you forwards, I think. That's what makes you excited about the project and, and how you can stretch yourself um, as a, a creative person. I couldn't have done it without um, the Royce People Art Fair and without Brandler Galleries who, who helped to support and make it happen. So it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's helped push me on. It's helped me think about where my work is as a, as a painter and how it potentially could go and move in, 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 in different formats. It's given me the opportunity to see how I can still paint with it, but actually I can take this into something in a new direction. I can get people involved in and interact with my work is quite exciting and I look forward to seeing, not quite sure where it's going to go, but I look forward to seeing where it's going to go.